Hey guys, welcome to Gary Gaming TV. Today we are going to look at the Star Citizen uh, planetary demo of the data citizen come. Uh, as you see on the screen now, you can see the FPS and millisecond response time top right. As you see, it looks amazing. Um, this is a live fly down from space to the planet. It's just absolutely mind blowing how amazing this looks. Um, we'll see how well it works when it's implemented in the uh, in the alpha, you know, test PU in 3.0, I think we're putting it into. Um, so we'll see how well it works there. But from the demo that they did, I was stupidly impressed. I was jaw open, drooling everywhere. Um, me and my mate uh, Ramp Mark 4 were watching it and uh, the level of detail is ridiculous for you know planet sized planets. And the fact that you'll be able to land anywhere on these planets and just you know find stuff. You know, I think they're going to put loads of things to find on these planets. Like little, um, little hidden gems and things like that, you know. Maybe even uh, a piece of a shipwreck with the crew's names on it, which might be Akka's names. You know, it could be anything. Um, but the scale and the detail is absolutely stunning. You can even see the curve of the planet from altitude and stuff. Because the draw distance is immense, um, so I think we're coming up to the constellation Aquila, is it? Soon. Oh, this is the weekend there. On the mountain top. Shout out to where hell off sitting. Kind of didn't hear that. But uh, the, the cloud formations look amazing. You know, if it's dynamic cloud and stuff like that, then that is stupidly impressive. Nah. And the terrain differential, you know, the snow here, the desert before, the trees, there's probably a forest maybe on this planet somewhere. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be absolutely amazing. And Chris Roberts did say he wants, yes, the procedure, the procedurally generated, but there's also artists tweaking them as well. You know, so that you can get that detail and realism into the planets. So it's not like uh, not like sky where it's procedurally generated. Which, don't get me wrong, the planets look amazing, but this is just on a whole new level. And here we are up to the uh, the Aquila, which is a cool looking chip. Um, I might run one of these so badly. I think I'll. Uh, skip game one of these. I think I have access to one in a minute. Uh, not sure why but uh, pretty sure I can get one. Uh, there's a new one of you been playing models I think. You'll recognise that dude from um, what was it? Iris to whatever, space or whatever it was. Iris to planet or whatever. Uh, which was the first iteration of the planets. So this is the V2 planets. Now you can imagine three or four of you cruising around this planet in formation looking for either somewhere to to mine or just somewhere to land and blitz around your buggies and you know, see what you can find. Um, I like this idea that certain areas are no fly zones due to either geological anomalies or just, you know, the military have said no fly zone. This is pretty cool. Um, I think they picked a good ship to show us. You know what I'm saying? I still would love to have seen the Caterpillar do this, but hopefully we'll see that in the future. The sun looks amazing. 
and the fact, don't forget, this is in atmosphere, so the ships are going to fly a bit differently because <laughs> you're going to have, you know, gravity and all that lot on it. You're going to have actual wind resistance and stuff, so you're going to have to get used to flying the ships differently in atmosphere. Which, don't forget, Elite Dangerous doesn't have yet. All the planets are atmosphereless that you can land on. Now, I don't know how many planets they're going to be per solar system in the game yet. I love the level of detail there were. Uh, the shock absorption for the, the landing does uh, compress stuff. As I was saying, don't know how many planets they're going to be per solar system, but I'd say there'll be a fair few. Um, I love the way they can select stuff in this. I love the, um, is it subsumption or something they call it? It's like a huge elevator open and stuff, just like pops up. That's quite cool. Very, very nice way of doing it. Keeps your, uh, your screen with minimal clutter on it. And I think what is worrying is one of the new updated armor sets. So you also get an idea of how your lockers and your gun racks are going to work in game because I'm sure quite a lot of us have ships with this sort of storage inside. Basically just gorgeous. And don't forget guys, this is seamlessly down to the planet, to the ship. Fur dues, it wasn't in the ship, but it's still all in engine, all running live. And a seamless run straight down to the the Aquila and the planet and that is an objective over there that you've seen which is what he was homing in on I think it was from a mission that he picked it is um, a distress beacon so this is the cool bit Instead of that little buggy, you get a proper off-roading truck, which I really like. I love one of these. I think you only get it with the Aquila and one of the other ships. Uh, I only have the buggy at the minute, which you'll see me drive into my star forever for a last. I love to get one of these big ones off for the back of the star forever or even the uh, Caterpillar. So, let's recap. So it's come from space, straight to a planet, no loading screen to do a mission, to a Halby spaceship, go around to the cargo bay, drop that down, go into his vehicle, which, with the gun coming up, anybody else see uh, alien influence there? It's the Marine Corps' uh, truck. So you can see the gravity is light on this planet by looking at it because of the way actually the jeep floats. Now we just haven't set it right yet. Um, so straight out of the ship, cargo bay down, his truck was stored in the ship all the time. Straight into that, onto the planet's surface, off we go for a weird adventure. The actual vehicle itself looks pretty cool. You can see the suspension working independently and all that sort of stuff, which I quite like. Looks easy enough to steer and control. Uh, not sure if you need a second person for the gun. Uh, you may be able to control that. Well, I'm hoping you'll be able to control that yourself. by your heads of displacement like that. Not a bad camera angle. It's uh, you know, fingers crossed. They might be had a few more cameras to remove it. Everybody has to have a wheel camera now, you know what I mean? Just to make those cool GTA style videos. This is about 30 minute long demo, uh, guys, as well. So, if you did 
can see the Citizen Con, you can see it on their YouTube channel. Um, which is very cool. Uh, the stuff about the website was very interesting as well. So go and watch it if you haven't done, guys. I uh, highly recommend it, especially if you're interested in the Star Citizen. And uh, after about 10 minutes in the video, I'll plug if you want to join Star Citizen, guys, you can go to the website. Use my code that's going to be in the description below. And you will get, uh, I think it's 5000 UEC for using my referral code. And like, I get like a point towards getting like a gun or something like that. But it'd be handy. So I like the mist, oh, there's a mist or a dust storm that's uh, kicking around there. It's pretty cool. I think it may be uh, like a mid morning mist or something or not. Uh, there are going to be weather effects in the game. There's going to be. Uh, I don't know whether they're going on a global scale or a localized scale. Um, that has yet to be seen. So you see him hopping out of his ship, and this is a knackered old uh, cutlass. Which looks really cool, considering you think about you know, how they've done to polish these ships up and now they've actually started getting them, you know, crashed and rusted and knackered looking. That's pretty cool. An interesting thing, if you look at his weapon, you can actually see it's the site is seeing what it should be seeing. It's not a fake picture on the site, it is real time video, which is also quite impressive. Easy enough getting in out the side door. Most games used to have trouble getting in out of them things. You've got to jump or faff about to get back inside, but that was easy up. The lighting effects are pretty impressive. You can see the bright lights uh, reflect on the dust there. Now, if you can imagine, you know. Maybe you and a couple of guys in that, and a couple of um, and we Drake hoverbike things with you as well. That'd be pretty cool. A wee team would be cruising along. I see this one being about finding cool stuff in the middle of nowhere. He's got a back door here just for effect. So that's where he's come from. I think it's on nearly 2,000 metres away, that's what. So, as you see, Orpheus Horizon. There's some names on there. Now, if that had, like, you know, backers names on it, that'd be cool. Or if there was, say, you found the shipwreck, gone inside it, and there was maybe a ship manifest or a roster, you could see you know, crew members names and maybe their backers or something because backers names are going to be in the game, they just haven't told us where so that could be um, could be interesting what they're going to do for that obviously this is a big universe and there's plenty of places to stick in names could be a newscaster could be a manifest could be on side of a down ship or something. Now that that view, that's quite a cool view. I don't know whether that's part of his camera or a secondary uh, player camera. So some people, which I'm assuming at AI, never really explain with AI or player control. Now the explosion not very impressive there, it's just sort of wheels and blown off. If it does have catastrophic damage like that on one uh, shot, then it, it's going to you know, require you to uh, drive very carefully, you know, not fly around everywhere and take people out and run over and stuff like that. Which I would love, you know, a bit of realism, realism in the vehicle damage would be amazing. So obviously, it's not quite a full powerful. Could have shot a guy through the suspension there, but that went. 
So the explosion looked really impressive. Uh, it's the same sort of damage model as the ships by the look of it. And the same particle effects and stuff. So I'm very impressed. Get a weak nose in the pistol. Lighting effects gorgeous as you would expect. Light reflected all the right places. Obviously, a bit of an ambush. I saw the beacon was the lure. These sand dudes thought they could get a bit of cash. You know, kill over comes. Possibly get the uh, the vehicle or whatnot. He comes in or even ship. example of how one mission can lead to another one, can lead to another one. A bit of the old chain quest in here, so this is giving him a location of something else. Here's another beacon. So, his uh, AR will update and you'll see where that is on the uh, screen. To be a couple of nice hover bags over here. Nicely camouflaged, nicely when you look at them. Now, whether that's going to be a thing you can actually do, give them camouflages uh, like a leap. Buy camouflage packs for your ships and cool if you can do that in Star Citizen. Apparently, you are going to customize your ships, put names on the side, uh, stickers, uh, your logos for your organizations, things like that. That would be pretty cool. You know, if you know you're going to be going to a snow planet or a desert planet, you put the, uh, the uh, corresponding camouflage on there. That you're blending a bit better for whatever nefarious, dodgy dealings you are doing. So, cruising through the desert. Now, don't forget, this vehicle can be used in space as well. So, it's actually quite handy. Obviously, you're highly exposed, you can get a bullet in the face, but if I zip around the planet, it's actually quite cool. I'm going to a few makes on these then. Hell's Angels of Star Citizen. Looks cool. The shades on. Oh, you can see over there a dust one. Now, whether you can see that from space or if you're flying above the cloud base we don't know um, you know apparently this is going to be on these planets you're going to get storms and things like that so whether you can fly through in your ship or over it and watch it go away you know go on underneath you uh, not too sure but that would be really cool if it was say a set size like say a kilometer or two of a dust storm um, so that's a bit battlefield 4 -y with the uh, weather effects but it could bring some um, handy gameplay in say if you're on a planet you see either someone you want to rob or some bad guys but you do see a storm coming maybe you could wait for the storm to arrive get in there attack or steal or do whatever you want during the storm if you're equipped for that so I could add some uh, gameplay elements to it so there's a space station up in space there how cool is that so depending on size and proximity to the planet you're gonna see it in space like you actually would in real life so that's super impressive as well again 
you know, this is a test server, this is very few people on it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this works whenever it comes to the PU. Hopefully it's going to work great. Uh, I'll certainly put in some more hours in whatever this planet stuff comes to it. Um, you don't really put a lot in at the moment. A, don't have time. B, not a lot to keep me playing at the minute, to be fair. Um, but whenever the professions come in, I'll definitely start playing and testing more. So I have a mining ship and all that sort of stuff, so I have the wee prospector. And uh, so round about four has. Uh, I've got the warships and that, so we can work together and uh, get some cash and see how it all runs. Detail the ground level is amazing, absolutely gorgeous. Mad dust all looks amazing as well, to be fair, from a distance. You can see it moving, you can see the lighting in it, you know, flashing the light up. Absolutely stunning. The level of detail is second to none. This looks like the engine cell of a Starfarer, possibly. That's what it looks like to me, it might not be, but. Looks big enough to be off a staff error. But I say I'm not really able to mine for a long time, so. Oh, what's that? Oh, oh, we have worm sign. Could it be right now on Dune? Are we looking for spice? Is this Arrakis? There's a hard corner over the next corner. Where's your house of trades? <gasps> yes, I've got to admit, I do like Dune. Cool book. Well, awesome book, awesome movie. To be fair, the game wasn't bad either, than we uh, come on the Conquest album. Anyway, I reminisce. Back to Star Citizen. So obviously from that, you know, you can tell it ain't going to be safe to walk across the, uh, the desert. So you are going to need vehicles to get around. A, walking will take you forever to get anywhere. B, it's probably going to get your ass bitten off. By something, either a worm or probably other things, depending on what planet you're on, I'm assuming. There's probably more things than worms knocking about this planet as well, if you think about it. So yeah, it is a planet-sized planet. I know I'm just one hazard on there. Oh, he's looking evil at the top. So here we are on a uh, busted up constellation or something by the look of it. What's that? The bad guys have converted it into a stronghold. Time for a bit of sharpshooting, maybe? He's toast. Although that round did look like it went hit higher than what he aimed. Let's see, a bit of ragdolling, a bit of gravity. Awesome. Can't be a bit of ragdoll. From what I've seen from a couple of the behind the scenes videos, um, the players do react to where you shoot them. So if you shoot them in the leg, you know, they'll react as if it's hitting them in the leg. It's not just a generalised uh, hit. So. Obviously, in the um, Death of a Star Citizen, he does describe that it's going to have things like you know leg injuries, arm injuries, and things like that. So, I'm assuming the hit reactions are going to reflect that, which is cool. So, if you get shot in the leg a couple of times, it's injured, you're going to be dragging it or whatnot, um, which will be amazing. And we'll also allow you to play dirty, you know. You don't have to kill the guy, take his legs out, wait for his friends to come, kill them instead. You know, you can um, set up traps and all sorts. So it's pretty big. Oh, that's a bad guy in front of 
the storm is getting closer. You can see the lightning. Obviously, I turned the sound down here so you can hear me. But on the uh, actual video on the website, this is the one without Chris Roberts talking on it. There's not commentary, so you can hear all the sounds of that. Uh, you can hear the thunder from the storm coming. It's pretty cool. Let's see, we take down there. Not quite as uh, polished and gruesome as battlefield takedowns, but still pretty damn cool. Like the storm coming kicking in. Now, from what I can see, all this outside blows away. Now, I don't know if that resets after a certain amount of time. Because um, obviously, this is going to be planet everybody can to see. So, I'm not sure how that's going to work. One person sees it, not never will again because the storm's going to do a lot. Or um, are they going to go on the premise that when you've got the bad guys will move back in again and rebuild one of the storm when you have damaged or destroyed? And that will set it up for the next person to go and experience the, uh, the playthrough. I'm not too sure on that. Or is it going to be permanent? Are you going to come here, kill this lot, and it's done? That's it, never appear again. They never went into much detail about the mission system, whether it's going to stay permanent in the game or it'll reset. Um, I think you could reset it to be fair. You know, they could move back in and set up the uh, Bit of a bad shot with a pistol, but still. There we go, you nice big burning weapon. That's cool. So even the interiors, these are well, uh, well detailed. Absolutely amazing. So you can imagine how much there's going to be to do on these planets. Uh, you know, some people might say, "Oh, well, you know, twenty or thirty or planets isn't really enough," but. If you're going to have this level of detail on it, there's going to be so much to see. Especially if the things out there to find. You know, on top of one of the mountains, there could be like rare minerals or weapon blueprints or a crashed ship or freaking anything to find. Again, with the artists and developers having a hand in these planets, they could hide stuff everywhere. And, you know, keep in mind that when you're prospecting, you have to scan the surface to find whatever you want, dig down to it, extract it, uh, have your mate come pick it up in his cargo ship, take it to a processing place, unless you have the big mining ship and you can process it yourself. But, you know, take it to a processor, either process it yourself or sell it. You know, there's so, so much to do. That's just the mining. You've got loads of other uh, uh, traits to do. Bunch of bad guys coming on the bikes. This looks cool. Not leaving him very well, but you can see how it's you know, Oh, and he just got nailed. Yep, this is doing alright. I just sound well. I think he's yelling all this. Not the live one, that actually cocked up. Um, he did the zoom out and played it twice. But we've edited it for this one, looks like. That is huge. I mean, look at the size of it compared to the player. You saw that uh, speed get destroyed as soon as you drove, drove into it. So, that's the dangers that you can have on a planet. And obviously, live zooms out. And you can see it's a small area that it covers compared to the size of the planet. Now, as you see, the atmosphere is blue. The atmosphere will be correct to what is on the planet. Oxygen, nitrogen, etc., etc. And there you have it, guys. That's a 30 minute demo. Amazing.